What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello, Greg. I like Hello, the Nick. green light. Are you going to put a red light behind the Superman logo, too, and have, and have Christmas back there? No. Why would I do Christmas? The Superman lights its own colors. I don't need to do anything. You know, it's just how it is. I do want to put, I was telling earlier, well, actually, you were on this show. Why are we having the same conversation <laughs> we had on Reacts? I'm going <laughs> to, God damn it, I fell right for it. Uh, he's the Hispanic heartthrob, Texas treat, Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds, the globe trotting, head shotting, nitro rifle from twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. ASMR. What's the fortune? Nobody, this is so nobody, exciting. Oh, yeah. What's it? That's not, that's not, ASMR is like not, the people don't want crunching paper in their phone. No, Andy, it's working. Keep doing it. Keep ready, doing it. Break it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. You're an audio listener. Oh, oh, oh I didn't like that. that. Good. I didn't like that. Good. Andy's opening his fortune cookie from Panda Express. What is it? It says say yes. Does it really? Okay. No, I Nick, can't. go. Nick, you get to no, it, please, it, can make you a please demand of Andy. Yeah, I feel like you should introduce our guest because this is going to be a rant. This is going to be a moment. Okay, <laughs> let me get Tim out of the way, too. Uh, he's Forbes 30 under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Gettys. Greg, what you need to learn is any surface is just another place you can put LEDs. Yeah. So, like, that, yes, the Superman light already has light, but there's I'm seeing four whole sides mm-hmm. that leds can go but think about it when i get the the light strip underneath it right and it's like broadcasting up the wall a bit then you'll be all set you don't need it i want what led advice okay oh, uh the I woman who wants some led advice ladies and gentlemen is none other than shannon woodward you know her from the last of us part two you know her from westworld you know yeah. her from a million other things hello shannon hi hi Woo! thanks for having me Woo! thanks for finally coming through we've been meaning to do this for a long time and you answered the call yesterday because you had nothing to do today and i appreciate that Boom, and here it is. <laughs> 2021, coming out of the blocks. No one was waiting for. <laughs> working on it, you know, working on it. Uh, Nick, you have the floor. You hate fortune cookies? I don't hate fortune cookies. I just think that fortune cookies hate us, and I don't understand why. My earliest memories of fortune cookies were always like you crack it, you, something to look forward to after a good meal, right? You crack it open, and it would always be a somewhat vague fortune that applied to pretty much anyone. Like it would be like, hey, be more like if you're open to new ideas, great things will come to you. I'm like, cool, I should have an open mind about stuff. Lately, though, whoever's writing the fortune cookies are just low key like burning people. Like that is a mm-hmm. troll that Andy, Andy just opened yeah. up a fortune cookie. That is a troll. And it's going to make him think for the rest of his day and probably bum him out. And I just, Nick, I'm, I'm against him now. It. Nick's I'm nailing it. Yes. Yes. How is he nailing it? Like, say yes. That's fortune, actually a good one. That's no, like, it's it like momentum. No, it is. Say yes to what? If Kevin, you said, what? say yes, yes to no, your up. friend about the car thing, then I'd be in. You know, I want more specific fortune cookies. They're too vague. Okay. Okay. It's too, too like, you know what? Give me more. Was there a character one. limit? Is there a character limit? No, no, no. They do small the fall, Annie. I feel like I'm creating a character in Madden and you only have like six letters for the back of the jersey. Like, what the fuck? Say yes. Come on, Panda. And what makes a good fortune cookie to you? Say what the best fortune, though, that I did ever see. A friend of mine kept this in his wallet for years. It was a fortune that just said, you're welcome at any party. And he would literally (laughs) be like, actually, I am on the list. And it truly, it I every time somebody reads a fortune cookie, I'm like, it's never gonna beat that. No. <laughs> it's not gonna beat real that. good. I'm with yeah, Nick that they used. Keeper. I feel like they used to be a little bit more like guys you on the karmic path, but I feel at some point when it got out there, right when it was no longer hip. And this is before the internet, but when it was no longer hip and everybody knew that, like when you read the fortunes, just say in bed. I feel like people started writing fortunes then mm-hmm. in their head, thinking mm-hmm. in bed. It's like like a bad so says. Andy says, say yes. But you can imagine the Panda Express fortune cooker got, cook together laughing it up as he writes this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sucks. I would like to troll people with them and just have things that just say, honestly, just let it go. Yeah. Just yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like you just imagine like some everybody's worried about something. Really just be like, just stop thinking about it. <laughs> honestly, they're not thinking about you this much. You yeah, know? That, that, that would be amazing. You're not, right, you open it up and it just says you're not the center of everyone else's universe. Yeah, <laughs> That's all I, it says. I, like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you're not the protagonist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You're not. laughs> I, see, Growing up in San Francisco, we had uh, a lot of different type of Chinese cultures and stuff and, and influences like this. And in in Chinatown, there was not one, not two, but three separate places that will let you get custom fortune cookies. That's terrible. That's a great so idea. I, I grew up with this type of shit for a lot my entire life of opening a fortune cookie and it's saying some 
bullshit. This you know what I mean? Because there is nothing funnier than being an eight-year-old and reading a uh, fortune cookie that just says "do it." <laughs> Because we know they're talking about sex. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. See, I thought Shannon was going to go more of the helpful mental health route and being like, hey, just take a deep breath. Like, let's enough with the sort of mystical guidings. Let's just take a deep breath. You know, don't sweat the small stuff. But Shannon just kind of straight up went like, dude, get matter. over it. Because <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. To some extent, like, you know, uh, you know we're all going to die one day. Just, you know yep. what? Just find yep. a way to get Who over cares? it. Just move on. Mm-hmm. Like, you're only yep. wasting time till you get over it anyway. It's a matter of accepting how much you're- you embarrassed yourself or whatever. You like open up, it's like you're an ant on a ball of mud. Like, yeah. it, just, it doesn't True. matter. The Damn. sun Damn. will Damn. Express. Space. <laughs> the sun I, will eat us all. <laughs> my personal mental health strategy is like nihilism to like uh absolute nirvana, right? Where you're like, eh, you know what? It doesn't really matter. Everybody's thinking about themselves anyway, not me. So I, I might wish. as well just accept it. I'll I be, wish I'll... I could flip that switch. Oh my goodness. That I'm, I would be so much struggle. happier. I'll be honest with you. My my approach to mental health, like good mental health, now is just following calm on Instagram, and it just says, "Hey, stop scrolling for a second. I'm like, I've done it today. I've done my mental health duty. This is it. I'm staring at a raindrop for 15 seconds. Those good. stories, literally, those stories change my sleeping. I'm dying to do a calm. I'm not famous enough, but like, let me read a calm. Oh, to read story. one? Hell yeah, that'd be amazing. Are you guys familiar yeah, I'm, with I'm what's the opposite of you guys? Styles. I'm the opposite of you guys where uh, I recently followed a, a TikTok channel. Do we call them channels? I don't fucking know. Creator. But whatever it is. Uh, is, it the sand is, one? is it the sand one? No, it's not sad. It's uh. called extreme shit. But like there's some weird underscores and stuff involved. And it's literally just motherfuckers jumping off of hot air balloons. No. And like mm-hmm. just like no, the most you. extreme parkour you can see. So it's the opposite experience of calm where like now it's just popping up every day. And I see this and I'm just like my adrenaline's running. No. But like no. now I just feel inadequate in the entire mm-hmm. world. It's it's either that Tim, More people inadequate. jumping off hide heights or when they do. When they have a GoPro on their forehead and they're doing parkour I, on the craziest that's gotta of stop. I'm gonna stop you there. No, swipe away. Yeah. Nope. I'm stopping you right there, Andy. Anytime someone has a GoPro on their forehead, it's probably a bad idea. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that isn't – you're never doing well, something like you that's see, like, this is safe. It's it, Yeah, I mean, you see the guys the that same- are – it's the same thing with the dash cam. I feel like when if I feel like if I was to put a dash cam on my car, I'm inviting the fact that I'm going to have the meteor crash. I'm going to see the car tumble over in front of me because I never see that kind of shit on the road. And I don't want to see that kind of shit on the road. Uh, wait a minute. I just want to be left did, alone. Let me drive. Did you just go into like a geostorm moment there? What was what? <laughs> no, I mean, you see that one from like Russia where everything's just chill and then it's like all of a sudden this <laughs> no, meteorite comes through. I've seen that. That's Great. amazing. You know, in, in other countries, like dash cams are like necessary for insurance stuff. So well, they do it now for it with Ubers. A lot of Ubers have them. Oh, do they? Yeah, no, I've noticed yeah. that. I've noticed that. But it's All just the Teslas like, have 360 dash cams. Oh, the Guardian sure, cam. Sure. Guardian cam. That's cool. Sure. Guardian cam? That <laughs> sure, sounds whatever you amazing. Call it, yeah, <gasps> yeah it's, isn't that what it's called? The Guardian? That sounds like, cool as hell. Uh, like that? It's called Sentry. Oh, my God. Oh, that's that's cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 Andy, can Andy, can you do the suit of, suit of armor around the world, please? The quote. I want to put a suit armor around the world. No, I got I don't have my Robert Downey Jr. glasses. Sorry, you gotta, I can't do uh, that. You got to okay. be ready to perform. Okay. Shannon, Andy, he's a big time celebrity. Andy does a spot on Robert Downey Jr. for one. He has one line he can do that sounds spot on. I mean, that like was Robert pretty. That, that was, was pretty spot on. Um, yeah. Tim, you mentioning the GoPro <laughs> on the forehead one. reminds me of a TikTok that I just saw, and I hate that the I hate that the kind of funny podcast has become. Here's what I saw on TikTok, but this one was horrifying, especially Isn't horrifying. Yeah, this one was especially horrifying. Um, really, really sad. And it is a man who is squirrel suit flying and up ahead had witnessed his friend die. Oh, God. And the camera While is facing the squirrel. Huh? While he was midair. Yes. Yes. Oh. So, like, I don't I don't know if he's still in the suit or maybe he's already parachuting by this point. No, actually, I think he is in the suit because the GoPro at this point is facing behind him and you see the rest of his body like out or whatever. But all it is on the camera, it cuts to him in an interview being like, he's trying not to cry. And he's like, and that's, I kind of knew immediately what had happened. Like I knew that he was gone immediately. And then they cut, and these uh, psychopaths cut back to him, the GoPro footage of just behind where he's flying from. And he is just 
screaming at the top of his lungs like the most pain and fear and like it is the most it is horrifying like i, I there's you don't you see anything it. you don't you see violence it. yeah greg but there's a fucked yeah, up part of me that's like i need to like what what what's the resolution like no the guy died no, there were there is no yeah, resolution you gotta bring, fun, right. you gotta bring fun well, stuff here you know you have I mean? to say yes <laughs> you guys want to go squirrel soup fight? I'm sorry, but there had to, I had to bring it back. Even though I'm so sorry for this that man and good. his friend. I'm so sorry. It was awful. No, it was worth it for the joke. Yeah, say yeah, no yeah. next time. Jeez, yeah, no, you got to say yes from here on out. Uh, I'm glad you, ladies and gentlemen, said yes to this. This is the kind of funny podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes five, best friends gather around this table. Each coming to bullshit about whatever it is they want to bullshit about. Apparently, it's usually just TikTok and Marvel. Uh, if you like that. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, where of course you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show ad free. You could be watching it as we record it live, just like Chance Carter is, Mike L is, yeah, Mike L, I got it right, and Corey Scott are. Uh, of course, uh, that's one way to get the show. If you want to give us no money, that's okay. You can get it on youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, and podcast services around the globe twice a week, once with guests each and every week. Housekeeping for you remember, uh, Loki is done. We have our latest reaction up to the finale, but that means that it's time to put loki into the mcu in review ranks we'll be doing that early next week so make you ca- make sure you catch up on our black widow review and of course what we thought of loki so far thank you to our patreon producers uh mark johnson julian the gluten-free gamer and steve powers today we're brought to you by canva but i'll tell you about that later for now shannon woodward look at you finally on this show huh so you talk about being a huge dork. You said that when we were setting up, you know, you're a big nerd. You push your PlayStation out of the way. You got your big uh, PC in the back there trying to like, trying to make a point. You play PC games. I get it. All right. Well, I mean, I do whatever. I do all <laughs> kinds of games. I, I have I'm I'm not fiscally responsible with my, <laughs> yeah, my you, you, you fit right in here then. <laughs> my type of person. I love it. Well, what else was I doing all year man. <laughs> the whole industry shut down it was like i was like i picked the one job the one job i can't do from home because my animals don't want to watch me do monologues my family doesn't want to watch that it was awful I sorry, did, you just, did you just bleep yourself is that yeah. what is that what's happening there yeah that's amazing <laughs> i also have a laugh track if you want that. i would love that next Nick time i make a joke that. could we please real, real yeah, the next yeah. the next yeah, i the feel next, like i've been bombing on this podcast the entire time still the next Aww. joke that's made about a snuff film that's when we need the laugh track to come in that's what we're right there great that'd great, be good great. that'd be good i'll make one at some point okay, probably great, great. well yeah, yeah. You know. uh yeah, my question for fun. you shannon then is yeah. uh, you know I have to hang out with these jabronis from The Last of Us Part 2 all the time. You know, your Troys and your Ashleys and your Lauras and all that. Mm. You and I haven't gotten to talk much about it, but I don't even want to talk about the process of it. There's a million podcasts about how you, you know, you actually recording it and doing all the stuff and put on the suit and yada, yada, yada. My question is, what was that like to do something that is so in line with your passions already? Like you're talking about what a dork you are, right? But I would have always been like, oh, Shannon Woodward, she's an actual, she's an actress. She knows what she's doing. I've seen her on the TV and in the movies and stuff. And then you cross over to video games and it's like, oh, you also love video games and now you're Twitch streaming all the time and stuff like that. It's just the easiest thing. I mean, mm-hmm. I stalked my way into auditioning because uh, Hallie Gross wrote on the first season of Westworld. Yeah. And um, we were at a friend's birthday party during the hiatus between the first and the second season. And um, I was like, what are you doing? Are you like specking? When, when do you guys go back to the room? And she was like, oh, I'm actually doing like a... A, like a, a small stint at this uh, video game company and i was like oh I, I play a lot of video games like what company and she was like naughty dog and you know lost legacy was about to come out so yeah. i was like jesus that was that long ago? writing oh over God. there <laughs> like the last of us 2 which had not been announced yet they announced it like a few months later yeah. and she went like white and got that face where like you're <laughs> going to get in trouble which i know well because we were working on westworld together and i was like oh oh you don't have to say anything i won't tell anybody like that's awesome i'm obsessed with that game and i was like tell neil Druckmann i would like die to have a line and i meant like an npc or something sure and it went like back and forth for a couple months. Like she'd be like, "Oh, Neil da, 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 says this, and he liked you in this, and whatever." And then a few months later, she was like, "You know, there's a role, but like, would you audition?" I was like, "Yeah, totally." Like, do I have to do anything different with my body since they? Like, and she was like, "No, no, you can just." I was like, "Great, put me in a weird outfit." People put me in weird outfits all the time. <laughs> um, and so on I'm camera gonna, and off. 
Yeah. So it was honestly like I the first time I read Ashley was out of town. So Laura actually read Ellie. Yeah. And we did the farmhouse scene. Oh, wow. Um, And then I did something else or maybe they only gave me that with Mm -hmm. Ashley. And then like a month later, Ashley came back into town for the Christmas break because she was shooting in New York uh, blind spot. Yeah. And um, and I read with her and then they hired me a couple hours later. Um, but that was the easiest. Cause as soon as it was her, I was like, I know, I know Ellie. I know how to love Ellie. Everybody has to love Ellie. It's the easiest thing you can do. Um, so it was honestly, it was easy. And I, I had dots all over my face and I didn't, there's no narcissism in it. All of it gets taken out. It's all the things I like about acting with all the bullshit parts taken out. So they don't have to move in and do cameras like it reset. We don't have to do it for nine hours. I don't have to ace it line by line because like every line is a different camera angle, right? Like you sure. got to know when you're shooting a movie or a TV show, you know, like, okay, this is for this part. This is for this part. The other stuff, even if it's bad, it doesn't matter. That doesn't go here. Whereas this, it was just like, we would do it like 30 times in the last one. They'd be like, that was it. All right. And I don't know I, if you know the- do it again. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but like, what is the decision making behind what actors are both the likeness and the voice and the motion versus a case like yours where, you know, it it is your voice and correct me if I'm wrong, your motion, you are the one acting it all out, but it's not your likeness. Yeah. So they designed uh, the, the Naughty Dog drew a character. They designed a character and they found someone to scan that looked like that. It, they found someone that looked like the drawing they'd already done. And we had, and it also is really a lot of my face because our faces are so different that it ends up having to adjust and move because the muscle structure and the way like I, I have like a palsy where one side of my face works a lot s- stronger than the other. And it's why like I can be funny sometimes. Like so all that ends up in it and like it starts to morph so a lot of the actually the only thing they scanned of mine was my hands those are my hands oh interesting he looked, like he said he i knew like it everyone from naughty dog all their hands and then saw a picture of my hands and he's like oh shannon's hands are perfect i was like my hands are perfect to play my hands that adds up <laughs> <laughs> um, but they couldn't scan any of my face because i look a lot like the ellie character and they were worried that if they tried to scan my face in any way that it would just become confusing so they had already designed a character um when i read and they had not found a face model for it but it looked exactly like that pretty much so that was how they did it. And and other people, like, you know, that's just Neil. Neil just decides, like, what he, he wants. He sits on his Iron Throne, yeah, and decides. Yeah. Who lives, who dies, <laughs> I am obsessed with him. I, I love working with him, and he's one of my closest friends. I'm such a fan. Yeah, Neil's great. Uh, <laughs> damn, Greg. <laughs> what? <laughs> just, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I was a real. No, it, 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 it was a genuine reaction. It was that, such that a whole wild was, thing that I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, like, no. It's a, it was a polarizing game, you know? Oh, sure. No, no. You're among friends here. It was mm. last of us part two was amazing. Mm. Yeah. No, we all loved that. it. Yeah. It was all of our game of the years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it was mine too. And I say that cause like the first game was my favorite game. Like it's like, it would be like if somebody was like, Hey, you want to be in star Wars? You're like, I know exactly what to do to be in star Wars. <laughs> my brains live there forever. <laughs> it, it was one of the rare games where like every fucking performance was amazing (laughs) like it was so hard to pick and choose between either of them because everybody sort of had their moment on screen that made you feel and i'm here in my apartment just tears rolling down my (laughs) eyes like in so many different sequences so it's it's i'm used to playing a lot of different games where like that person's the star of the show and the other people you may not have heard of and you know whatever they do a fine job but this one was just like god damn every like Troy Baker probably spoke the least of a lot of the actors in that game and was still just amazing every time he was on screen. But yeah, I, I we all loved it, Shannon. You're among you're amongst friends here, okay? <laughs> no, I, I I figured I but just you know people listening. I just want to. It's it was it was wild. I I guess I have a little bit of like a drama from being like no no no. I love all these people and I loved making it. Were you ready for that? Uh... Not obviously the reactions to Last of Us Part Two, but more of the thing. I think you kind of had this moment, right, where it was that you were on Twitter as much as so many gamers are. And again, it's that thing where I think so many people knew you obviously as an actor, but to see you come out and be like, "Oh no, I love video games," and then be in this video game, it felt like all of a sudden I saw you being 
retweeted, interacted with from the industry and the fans in a way different way I than came I came out before. in the pandemic. I came out as a nerd. That's what happened. <laughs> I made a joke about that. Where like everybody, everybody I knew already was like, Shannon is just such ass. Shannon, I don't know. Shannon will know. Yeah, <laughs> about nerd stuff. It's like um, oh, you need to turn off the HTCP. It's a setting in the yeah. Like carry your struggles. Come over. Don't wear outfit. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it just there was no reason for me to for people to know. But then, you know, once also I've been working on it for five years. So like sure. so much of my time was spent with all of these people that work in games. And so that meant like I got to hang out with them and I got to like go to fun video game stuff. And all of a sudden people were like, wait, Shannon's gone to E3 for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> How do we not know that? I'm like, nobody was interested in me. <laughs> no, yeah, you weren't walking the floor like and more. like, that's the girl from the riches. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot of crossover audience. I I won't lie to you. Uh, you know, again, you, you're this weird uh quantity where I feel like you've been around a long time. Like you you retweeted yesterday, right? Uh, an image of you on Clarissa explains it all. And I was like, yeah. I didn't realize that was you, but when you, I saw the clip, I was like, oh, right, that's you. And that's, I feel like in my life of watching TV, like, you know, we're contemporaries, obviously, in age. So it's like, I've seen you in so much stuff. Where I'm like, oh, it's that girl or whatever. Right? And this was the thing of like, I think that maybe. Again. Yeah. yeah they, they keep casting her. Why? No, no. But like when you were on Westworld, it was like, oh, I, I recognize her. You're one of those people, right? I know that. I know her from something. And then when you got Last of Us and we you started interacting, it was like, okay, cool, Shannon, like, there's this thing to it. But looking through your IMDb, and today and seeing the riches i had a moment of sitting there and going like i loved the riches who is she in the riches and then it was like <laughs> Dee, and i like stared at it. i was like shannon was one of the main characters <laughs> in the riches and i like because when i met eddie at a powers event at new york comic-con you like i was like yeah this show is great blah blah let's talk about the riches the riches was amazing <laughs> yeah he's like oh my god thank you and like todd stashwick right same thing mm -hmm. first time i ever got to talk to todd i was like yeah that's great uh the riches was awesome and you were terrifying on it stuff like that like there's a bigger crossover for the riches than you think there are no no for sure they're they're the, i mean the riches was like a super beloved show and we all loved it too and i mean we've talked a million times about like trying to do something again especially like 10 years later especially because i feel like the riches were the first maga family really like let's be honest <laughs> um but uh yeah, it, it it was wild. It just got killed by the writer's strike. And so it was just Sucks. kind of yeah, it, it, and it was left on such a cliffhanger, year. right? Didn't it? Like Stash yeah. like he took he took the he took the boy and like he was like gonna do this whole Jared thing. Jared Harris. Just, yeah. Jared Harris was in it. Because yeah. we did uh an episode of Law and Order together and they were mm -hmm. trying to cast this character who was like, Who would be scarier than Todd Stashwick? And I was like, I just work with this guy, Jared Harris. He's amazing. You should hire him. They're like, Shut up, kid. And then they hired him. <laughs> and then he got Mad Men after that. And I was like, Well, well, well. Look Another career I've made. <laughs> so um, you bring up Law and Order. I'm interested in that because oh it, it feels like with with all all the a lot of our cool friends that we have on the show, Law and Order specifically svu seems to be the common denominator between everybody that like that is the rite of passing of like if you are acting in any form you need to be on a law and order yeah yeah does it feel that way doing the show like when you're part of it like do you feel like it's something special that you're doing I mean, I was very excited I, because they offered me the job and I was I was like, oh, that's fancy. Somebody's just offering me a job. Uh, and spoiler alert, I play the killer. Um, <laughs> I was about to watch your episode. <laughs> well, watch it because it's way wilder than that. It is really <laughs> crazy. That's I mean, the whole right? thing. Now, and, that like, means the, that you're like someone special. The turns, the killer's the coolest the part. The turns that happen, it is so, it is so silly. I cannot tell you, it is absolutely the silliest thing I've ever done. And like, it, I listen, I was thrilled to be there. It was an absolute honor, but I mean, screaming, like, there was a bit where I like cut my own boobs off. And then there's parts where what? I'm crying on a witness stand saying, look, uh, he cut my boobs off, but it means I did it myself. There's a place where I'm, there's a, a part where I'm covered in rats. There's a part where I, I'm screaming, <laughs> crying at Jared Wait, Harris in hey, a courtroom getting dragged out. What? Some of the silliest things I have ever done in my career are all in that episode. Shannon, this um, sounds like a movie trilogy. <laughs> like, yeah, like, every scene like was like, and now you're a new character. It, like, it was very, very serious. There's one part where I'm sobbing in a hospital after I have cut my own boobs off, but I'm acting like somebody else did it. And Mariska Hargitay is like, 
she's talking to me and I'm literally crying like my life is so messed up <laughs> it's literally a line it's on <laughs> so much and like comedian pals of mine will text me just like clips of that and being like your life is so messed up <laughs> 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 Like, however much they worst. paid me will never be enough. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but it was a hoot. I do. I find it very funny. I'm. I think it's really funny. But when people are watching, I'm like, oh boy, have fun. <laughs> with, with the amount of of kid actors that you know, they do it for uh, until they're twelve or thirteen, and then maybe can't find a whole lot more work, and then eventually move on to other career paths or whatever. That's smart. At, at, <laughs> I, I recommend that. Get out. Exactly. Yeah. Was what there? Did I tell any... you about the pandemic, Andy. <laughs> what was there any point where you wanted to kind of just say like, ah, shit, maybe I should go somewhere else, or am I going to keep on going with this and sort of chasing this sort of, you know, like did because you're in The Last of Us too, and that's that's <laughs> fucking crazy that you were in Clarissa. Clarissa explains it all when you played that clip and post, posted it on Twitter the other day. I was like, holy shit, I remember this. And uh -huh. that I can't believe that that's the same person as the star of The Last of Us 2 and in Westworld. Like that, that shocked me. So like, was there any point where you said, maybe I want another career path or am I just going to keep on pursuing acting? It's kind of, when I was a kid, it was like the thing my parents told me was a job you couldn't really have. Mm. I did not like being told that and i really want i always felt like they underestimated me <laughs> and i was just like well if that's the thing you think is impossible that's what i'll do yeah and that's kind of how i got started and then i didn't really second guess that until i was doing the riches and we were on the riches and that show was really tough we really didn't have very much money to make that show most shows you shoot um like a drama episode in you know nine days so it's really a, a week and a half right five days and then a few at least like eight days it we did it in seven an episode which was it's just really hard which means the hours are crazy we're constantly just like it's really tough it's like square peg round hole kind of thing and sure. um I was so tired, you know, I was so tired. I was driving to work one day and it was like, I'd only slept like five hours. I've been working all week. I was so happy to be there. I loved everybody. I loved doing the show. I loved the role. I was so tired. And I was like, how did I find a job where I have to wake up at three in the morning every, every Monday? Like what? And I was like, oh, I guess I'd never really considered that I could have just done something else after that conversation with my parents where they said mm -hmm. that job was impossible. I'll show you <laughs> head down the, the job, entire way. <laughs> the job, like, I, I, I was like, why didn't you just tell me I wouldn't cure cancer or something? Like, yeah. it would have been an expensive <laughs> school, but, like, I really would have committed to that. No, 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 I don't know if I'd have been successful. But and, <laughs> and That's and the joke, but... At, at that, that, I, I was going to say, at that time, up. are you also booking other smaller gigs while you're doing the riches? Well, The Riches is a full-time job. Like, I mean, I was a, one of the leads of that show. So I, so basically, like, around college age, when I, like, applied to college, you know, I, I applied to a bunch of schools, and then I got this movie with Tommy Lee Jones, who was playing his daughter, and it was, like, a big studio movie. And um, I was like, well, it was, like, for three and a half months. We had to go to Austin, and we shot it, and it was super fun. But I was like, well, I'll do that, and we'll see how this goes. And, like, if it lulls, I'll just... I'll just go to college. I'll just go sure. to school and see whatever. Mm -hmm. My dad at the time was still like one of the head programmers at IBM. And he's like, just come work for IBM. And I was like, you are miserable. Why would yeah, I want to do like that? Mm -hmm. um, so like I, you're like, I get to hang out with Tommy Lee Jones. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I guess depending on who you talk to, that's either good or a terrible thing, but <laughs> he was lovely to me. He taught me Let's a lot see. about lenses. Yeah. He was about oh, to go nice. direct the three burials, which, you know, did very well. He's a very good director and uh, he's going places as an actor. I hear it's going to work out for him. <laughs> it, not too long after I did that movie, I got the riches. Like I started working all the time after that movie, like doing like lots of guest stars and most of that stuff. Like I guest starred on like every TV show for like the next, two years and then and then I, I like I screen tested for like 14 shows I didn't get before I got the riches and it was because I looked so young and like my sense of humor was so dark that people would constantly call me like she's great it's just like she's got this like darkness like like <laughs> she doesn't work on this sitcom and then it worked for the riches and then I started aging enough that like 
it wasn't weird that I was on Raising Hope for almost five years. And then right after that, I jumped on Westworld. And then uh, I, when I stopped doing Westworld, then I created a TV show actually with Annapurna about Nexium. Um, but then wow. it fell apart after we, we sold it to TNT and then it fell apart after that. But, um, which happens a lot when you sell TV shows. But so I waited and I've got a new show coming out in next month on Apple called Mr. Corman with, uh, Joe Gordon Levitt. So I just never did anything because she just called him. She just called him Joe. Was. I know. I, was gonna, I wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to say Joe anything. Gordon Levitt. Yeah, I, I just love Joe. It. I love that's, it. That's the sorry, coolest that's his name. <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. no. Well, if you, if you know him, if you're in with I'm Joe, sorry, you're calling him. We're I saying that it's that. super cool. No, we love him. That. That. We, we, we are last. The last episode we had was with a guy from fandom. We were like, "Tell us every story. Name drop everything. We love it. You're on the show where we want to hear people call Joseph Gordon. Yeah, we we wish we were close enough to to JGL to to call him Joe. Talk or to him about hit record. I mean, he does all kinds of Can't interesting text stuff. Him right now. We'll wait. World. Text him right now. <laughs> do not do not do that. In New Zealand. Oh, here yeah, it comes. Here he's comes not going to get back. All right. He had to go see some hobbit we holes. Shot, we finished the show in New Zealand because it wasn't safe here. Oh, so. shit. oh right. Because yeah, New Zealand like locked it LA. down, right? Yeah. Yep. But you were talking about that earlier. So you were saying that there's still a lot of stuff, a lot of the COVID restrictions in place, right? It's still a lot of masks and stuff, especially because there's still so much virus in the community that like people can still test positive if yeah. even if you're vaccinated. So like the unions have to basically they have to agree on new rules before anything changes. It's like uh, a union yeah. union thing. Sure. But, yeah, I, I saw what a lot of people went through. Obviously, like our production, we were able to very, very easily go just into our the places where we spend 90 percent of our time anyway, which is in front of our computers and PlayStations. Yeah. But like a lot of my friends in the industry are still dealing with like masks and co and temperature checks and covid checks every time they have to go places and it is just tiring <laughs> i don't know how you guys I mean, do it honestly the thing for me is just i was shooting something last week and it was just it was it was 113 and i was <sighs> in a long sleeve wedding dress with two wigs on and like all this psycho makeup and i was just like the mask really throws it over the edge for me <laughs> like, yeah. it's the heat that like i don't mind i'm i was like such a covid nerd i was in the pfizer trials like i let them rat lab rat me like i'm all for ending the pandemic and keeping people safe but it's tough in the heat i don't mind it so much like i also i love getting tested every day it makes everybody feel safe to be like don't worry got tested still negative got some yeah. good news today that's cool <laughs> but, yeah but it, it's when it's really hot the masks really suck you bring up the test. Uh, Rocker22 wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can to be part of the show and says, question for Shannon. You participated in the COVID vaccine trials last year, and I'm curious to hear what that experience was like and what concerns you had going in. Was there like a, yeah, was there like a broad call for this? And you're just like, yes, I no, will I go. Stalked. So here's the thing. I like, <laughs> like the last of us. I stalked my way into the Pfizer trial. Um, well, like I said before, like our whole industry was literally just shut. There was yeah. nothing to be doing. There was nothing I could be doing um, other than writing. And that's miserable. Um, and <laughs> so I was reading all the medical preprints, like anything that was about COVID every because I wasn't sleeping well. You know, the CDC at the time seemed compromised. Everything was weird. Nobody really knew what was going on. There wasn't clear guidance from the government. It was really like, so it's like the only thing I can do is, is read these actual studies that are happening myself. And the Pfizer vaccine was just jamming from like May, the BioNTech had already been developing these mRNA vaccines that, I mean, that woman's story is unbelievable. And if, any nerds out there curious google the the woman who discovered like the mrna vaccine stuff she's incredible but what's the elevator pitch tell me the elevator pitch she basically like discovered and proved in a petri dish that you could use rna which basically is like a messaging system between your dna and your cells sure. and your dna has to get the, your message of like what your dna says to print to your cells like to so be like this hair is this color so print that hair that color and that's how it communicates from your DNA to your cells. So she was like, if there's a messaging system, if we just created a message that the cells would understand, we could teach the cells to make anything. Now, it would only make it for a short period of time. You would have to continue to give that message, right? Sure. Frequently. Like, so that's why it's like not as useful for cosmetics, but she was like for medical things, like, for example, teaching your body how to make a spike protein and then the, the basically Lego pieces that would latch onto it. 
it took 10 years for anybody to listen to her. Nobody would wow. take her seriously. And it happened six months before the pandemic. There's a great wild. daily episode about Holy it. That's going to do a much wild. better. And they they basically brought her into BioNTech and they started, they got a contract with Pfizer to make flu vaccines. The, the daily. And the, to develop a cancer vaccine. New York Times you your uh, body. podcast. Yeah, Sorry. the daily. Yeah, it's a great podcast. Uh, yeah. Hey, Greg, I set up my Bluetooth light the other day. See, we can do things yeah, too. That's where we're, we're at. at. That's yes, where we're at. We Up until this we point, I've I've heard RNA, and I was like, I'm pretty sure I know what that is. I did not. I did not know what amazing. that is. And so <laughs> it's basically amazing. like a message, and it's also very fragile, so it breaks down in your body very quickly. You can't. It's why you can't test positive just from getting vaccinated because it all it falls apart in your arm and you pee it out. I got like chills by you telling that story about it's this amazing. woman doing that. Like, that's fucking crazy. She's like modern day Marie Curie. I cannot tell you. Like she is just like she rides her bike to work. I'm obsessed with her. Um, <laughs> get a restraining order against me, ma'am, doctor, ma'am. Um, but anyway, so I'd been reading their their animal studies with this with the COVID vaccine. The and it was. I mean, the results were. They were through the roof and they were also like exposing them to so much virus, pumping it into their bodies after they would vaccinate them to see how the vaccine held up, which is also why they didn't have data about mucosal immunity, because they usually see that in animals. But they pumped so much virus into these monkeys afterwards that like they were way through the threshold of mucosal immunity. And it w anyway, it was amazing. The results were amazing. So then I'd been emailing through clinicaltrials.gov and calling places locally, like once they started the human it. trials. You're just shaking these people down. I, I, they, got Greg, 20, Greg. they got through 20,000 people. And then one, one morning, this place on Wilshire in LA, they called me. They're like, hey, you wanted to sign up for the Pfizer trial? I was like, yes. You get called up to the big league. <laughs> and then I was like, can I give this number to anyone? They're like, yeah, we need 200 people. So, you know, tell, have them call quick because it'll probably fill up. So my whole family signed up. I mean, 50-50 oh got placebo. And a lot of my friends did too. Uh, some of my co-stars did it. Like, um, but I, uh, I got lucky and I got dosed. And that was pretty obvious. Yep. Andy, <laughs> do you know? Did you know that you could sign up for a clinical trial for for a drug? I did not know, but I imagined <laughs> Shannon standing outside of this, uh, out of the woman scientist's house, like with the boombox, like Ferris Bueller style, like <laughs> test me, style. like <laughs> Ferris Bueller. That's who you think okay, it is. It holds okay. up. He got the close. He got oh, very close. Oh, say anything. Say anything. Yeah, it was John yeah, Cusack yeah. style. Yeah. The, there we go. There we go. My bad. That's so were you that's concerned, Shannon? Like, did you, I mean, did you worry about like any side effects or anything like that? No, they'd already done 20,000 human beings, you know, like yeah. with no side effects. Like it was also pretty clear, like. It's, I mean, the, the vaccine is, it's lipids and RNA. Like it, it, it's, you just pee it out. It's, it's tiny fat cells to make it acceptable, the message. And that's it. That like, you know, I, I honestly, the only concern I had is that I would get placebo and I really, mm. really, really didn't want to get sick. And I really, really wanted to go back to work. Sure. And, um, yeah. So, and, and I flew to New Zealand like three weeks later and I was really afraid I was going to get sick on that plane. Sure. Or yeah, get I sick imagine. and be in New Zealand and feel terrible that I brought COVID to New Zealand. Yeah, you were the one that reintroduced it into the into the country. Yeah. That would and Larissa dad explains it all star. Too. Shannon Woodward <laughs> has brought COVID. Just so you can tell everybody how old I am also. Yeah. yeah uh, low key. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> People in New Zealand are like, what is this show? What are they talking about? <laughs> I mean, that's a Easy. long flight too. Like that's kind of scary. It's not like, I oh, a scared. flight from SF to LA. Like that is, we're talking, you know, over 10 hours minimum of a yeah. flight. Like that is, you're in a small space with a lot of people. Yeah. From Los Angeles. And it was so bad at the time. Actually, I worked on a show oh, in LA yeah. the week before I flew there and that was the first time I'd shot anything. And like a, that whole show ended up shutting down like a couple weeks later because they all got wow. sick like the next week because I left on Halloween and a bunch of people like it was a Halloween parties and all that stuff and people got sick. Um, so it was bad when I left. So anyway, I, I was I was, you know, really thrilled. That was cute. <laughs> I was I was thrilled to be uh, chosen to be vaccinated. And I, I had like a mild fever from the first shot. So like I knew and I was like, yeah. like yes, <laughs> you just got 30. You're just double testing thermometers being like, which one's going to be what's going to be. Ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I, I just took my first flight. Um, gosh, in, in probably since COVID started um, the other day to, down in California to see my uh, to see my folks, my mom's birthday. I haven't seen her in a while. So I was like, I'm going to come down and I don't surprise her. 
because I don't think she'd react well to that. So I told her well ahead of time, like, mom, come in. If you're okay with that, if not, we can come up with an excuse. Um, but getting on that plane was weird, especially weird. since I'm slightly claustrophobic. So oh, yeah. I, like, and, and I, I never check in on time and it's a Southwest flight. So I'm always like the butt end of C group. So by the time I get there, I'm like, I know that I'm sitting in the middle row and everyone's wearing masks and it, they never, like, it's been unseasonably hot. I don't know why, probably global warming. And it's, <laughs> it's okay, one of those things. We haven't proven that. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I, don't know, I don't know how many times california needs to erupt on fire like hell's kind of springing forward but it doesn't matter ladies and gentlemen uh it's no but i get money for fire okay i'm sorry i'm sorry it's, 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 it's true it's terrible. i live in los angeles it's terrible we didn't sweep a, the leaves we didn't sweep the leaves but yeah but getting on you know you're gonna get on that plane it's gonna be it's gonna be hot because they never turn the air conditioning on on, on the runway and i'm just so like hot. i'm gonna freak out and i had to like pull the mask off my face a little bit and breathe a little bit and be like, no, you've been here before. Act like you've been here before. Right. Andy, sure. that's the sports saying, act like you've been, act here, like before, you've been yeah. here. And then I saw, I swear to God, maybe I made this up. Maybe I didn't make it up. Maybe I just made it up right now, Tim. I saw a glint of a silver can of diet Coke and I'm like, it's all going to be okay. I'm going to get a diet Coke and I'm going to sit and it's going to be ice cold and it's going to be great. You don't sleep on planes, right? Nick? I cannot sleep on planes. now. I don't, I, don't do can, I can't sleep sitting up. What? What? I can. Uh, of course, I myself. So we're traveling so much. Weird. I can. I, I now I can't stay awake on planes. It's the opposite. That's right. Forty-five yeah, minute good. flight. I got. I got nineteen games on my switch ready to go. As soon as I sit down and hear the engines, I fall asleep. Uh, I wish. I think and I, I actually have terrible neck pain when I wake up. I <laughs> think part, not awful neck oh, pain. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you have to do the thing where you're like this, and then you keep cocking your head back. Oh, I actually, I actually like planes though. I like long plane flights. I find them to be relaxing. I think there's something about. Like, I know you can sign on to the Wi-Fi, but I'm too cheap to do that. So I'm like, I have no signal. No one can text me. And if I don't know someone on this plane, no one's going to talk to me or bother me. I can just watch whatever free movie is on the app. I watched Spoilers, the Lego movie. Hadn't really seen that before. Watched about half of it. Didn't go back to it. It's kind of weird. I hate you. I knew you were going to talk shit. You're such a garbage human it's being. It's not that I'm talking no, shit about it. Lego it's, movies? Uh, it's, feud? It's, no, here's the thing. I love Lego Batman. I just can't get through the first Lego movie for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. And that's no disrespect to if you have any friends that worked on that or if you yourself did a voice for it, and I just don't know. But I get about 20 minutes in that movie every single time, and I'm like, everything is awesome. I don't need to watch the rest of this movie. I'm good. God, you're garbage. See, the and thing I watched Lego Batman. I watched Lego Batman 15 times. I swear to God, I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. What Nick just said uh, about this whole thing is so funny because, like, I love Nick on airplanes because Nick gets his best work done on airplanes. I'm not being sarcastic and not joking at all. He is just in a zone. The longer the flight, the more high quality work he gets done. He's just sitting there on his MacBook, just like making like motion cramps. graphics madness. Yeah. Like, it is just from it magic, it's like this, man. like a T Rex. He kills it. Like, he'll do things like we haven't even discussed editing videos and will like land the plane and Nick will just be like, Tim, I just finished a feature film. And it's like, what the fuck? I didn't know we were doing that. Like, it's the most impressive thing, but it's funny that he brings up the fact of like, I'm there. Hopefully no one else around me knows me and it's going to distract me. I know a lot of people on planes a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm usually with a big group. So they going on like E3. It's like the entire industry or whatever. Right. And they all leave them. me alone. We're all just kind of doing our own thing. We might say hi, maybe the peace sign. That's it. But if you're on a flight with Nick Scarpino, you can't do anything. <laughs> you can't do anything. It doesn't matter if he's next to you or 10 rows in front of you. You could be watching a movie on the dumb little screen in front of you. And all of a sudden you just hear like Nick from 10 things away being like, Tim, Tim. And I'm like, we're on the, the guy uses seat messaging? He no, is use, the guy who uses the seat messaging. The I, will, I will use seat messaging. I will. I, if I, if there's an eye line to you, between the cracks of seats, I will peek between it. I will make sure you see just one of my eyes peeking through. Again, I don't sleep on planes. So if you're trying to relax and sleep on planes and you are there, then you're, you're, you have to hang out with me. That's what's going to happen. Listen, if, if I'm on your plane, do not take your shoes off. I oh. will talk to you. If I see your naked feet. If oh, I see naked your feet nude, on a plane is you're a, you're a monster. I see your nude feet. No, no. How do you feel about socks? Everyone I know will know. Okay. The whole internet will know. <laughs> no. Let's let me paint. Okay. A, let me paint a picture for you. Okay, you get on. You get on the plane. 
Uh, this is the one time that I have checked in early. You walk past me. You're probably sitting in first class, but let's just say that you're no. sitting Unless with the rest of us. Unless somebody's flying me for work, I am five foot two. Okay. I'm in the back in coach. Yeah, I'm 5'8". <laughs> I'm 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 I feel like the only time in life I can excel is when I'm on crammed into an airplane and I just feel just fine. Me and Andy are in that same boat. These, these savages over here, Greg and Tim, are above six feet. That's for the birds. Yeah. Uh, you walk past me. You look down. And you see me just pop off one shoe and the other one's just a sock. Are we okay with socks? You got a sock. That's fine. Okay. I get it. Oh, it's great. Hot. great. But make yeah. sure if you know your sh- your feet get smelly, bring a sock change, you know? Oh, keep your foot. No, if your feet, if you have stinky feet, yeah, you gotta keep the shoes on. You gotta keep the shoe on. You better keep those things laced too. You're wearing. You know if your if your shoes that you like have a if they got a problem, don't wear those on the plane. Now, Shannon, now, how do you feel you about saw- people that bring in beef jerky? And then, <laughs> okay, you know, no, 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 we, Nick, 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 I'm right there with this just, Snickers. I don't mind that so much. All right, perfect. Because yeah. I'm, I'm right there what about with sushi? Nick. <laughs> no, all right, well, that's something else. That was I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Nick, where I often, me and Nick share a bag of beef jerky. Doesn't matter yeah. how many people there are between us, he'll be, well, he'll ask, ask the person. To- yeah, he'll ask the person next to him, forward. can you pass him the beef jerky? <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I, we offer the beef jerky to the person if there's, if there's someone in between yeah, us and they would like some of the like, Jack Hanks beef jerky. Yeah, you can I have a little say, beef jerky. I do, I do bring my own snacks sometimes if I'm thinking sure. ahead, especially for long flights. Oh, of course. Because otherwise, the snacks, they're all carbs or like cookies. And usually, especially if I'm on a long flight, like I'm probably only flying for work. And I've probably been exercising a lot <laughs> before somebody was going to film me. So mm-hmm. like jerky yeah i get that like that's a relatively healthy snack with you know a, a shelf life where it's not gonna rot in your backpack I, i'm yeah, taking see. i'm taking my first flight in two weeks uh since december 2019 wow and i am really excited to wear my mask on the plane because i get like here's the thing i fall asleep all the time i fall asleep pretty easily and mm-hmm. it's usually because i'm an idiot and i'm very sleep deprived before every flight yeah and I never learn. I will still look at the fucking flight app and book my flight for 6 a.m. Right, and I'll be right. like, and I'll be like, yeah, you can noon. sleep on the plane. It's like, noon. I'm always tired. Terrible. It's got to be noon. I would, I would rather be fly noon. out exactly. at so 10 here's o'clock at night than, than up in the morning. It's like you two hours to get to the airport. It's such yeah, a, noon. I, I never learn. I never learn. But the thing that I'm excited about is that I can wear the mask. And if I am in like the deepest sleep of all time, I don't got to worry about my mouth hanging out, looking all gross and shit. True. I got the mask on. Very yeah. excited about that. Because for a while, I felt that way with my, uh, with even my eyes. Like I, I would bring the eye mask, right? I would bring the eye mask to sort of black everything out. And it, I love that on a flight. It's fantastic. And I usually have my soundproof headphones on. And I'm just kind of in a world of ASMR. ASMR. I mean, I'm in a world of ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> I just needed to put that out there. Now, hold on, Nick. Before we call on you, we speaking of the world of ASMR, there's a whole bunch of ASMR on patreon.com slash kind of funny, where, of course, you can go to get each and every episode of the kind of funny podcast. Uh, you can get it. You can get it early. Watch it was recorded live. You can get it with the post show. We do each and every episode. And of course, you can get it ad free, but you're not watching on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Are you ja- or get, kind of funny? Are you Jack? So here are the sponsors for this week. This show is brought to you by Canva. Listen. Design is hard. I'm talking about art design. Even making thumbnails in Photoshop can be hard sometimes for me, but that's why I'm excited to tell you about Canva. Kind of Funny loves Canva. Tim Geddes himself says that it is super useful and easy to use. It makes all different kinds of design stuff. You just pick the styles you like and it does all of the work. Super helpful for creators. Canva Pro is the easy to use design platform that has everything you need to design like a pro. It's a quick, easy, and affordable way to design whatever you need. No matter what you're creating and sharing, Canva Pro has everything you need in one place, including a collection of over 75 million premium photos, videos, audio, and graphics. Plus, Canva Pro comes with time-saving tools to simplify and speed up the creative process. You get all of this and more in just one Canva Pro subscription. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code. Just go to canva.me slash kinda funny to get your free 45-day extended trial. That is C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash kinda funny. Canva dot me slash kinda funny. Now, Nick Scarpino, what are you going to say? I just, I just had one more light grievance to share with the group, mostly just for the listeners. If you do this, please stop doing this. Please stop just wearing your socks to the bathroom on planes. 
that is don't take your shoes off on plane full stop no you can take your shoes off don't you when you start when you start doing this this is where you get into the oh well now now that now there's a now there is a barefoot and now there's a barefoot somebody's putting up on the footrest and pushing it between the seats there needs to be a a line if you wear your socks to the bathroom the odds of you getting urine on your socks are 100 high just 100 percent yeah. It's not even odd. Think it's a about fact. It. Like, it's going to happen. But think about it. Like you have your barefoot. You got your socked feet on the airplane uh, anywhere in your seat. Those the shoes before you probably stepped in dog poop or had pee on them or whatever. Like it's not like outside of the outside of the bathroom is clean. Everybody's stomping all over that place hey, with thirty. Hey, Greg, Greg, somebody fucking stomping, farted right. a mile away. Maybe that air is here now. This is no slippery slope, Greg. All right, chill the fuck yeah, out. I'm gonna I'm gonna have my socks exposed. Okay, no bare feet. You of course wash your not. socks. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I'm team socks, socks are fine. I don't give a socks fuck if it's okay. bathroom or not. As Who long cares? as you know that they don't smell. Oh, you know, yeah. hygiene's important. You're in very close. But the reason, like, I mean, listen, it's just gross to see other people's bare feet. But the, it, honestly, it just drives me crazy because it's such an expression of privilege where it's like this is my plane yeah this yeah. is my space yeah, yeah. you're here in my house no, bear- in a way that like i feel that way like i see people sometimes with their shoes off at the airport in terminals like things like that i'm like what are you doing man like, this is a shared space now here's I- the thing that, to defend that to some extent oh, here we go here's okay. he's, here's an old uh, here we are foot, here we here's are an old the naked, naked foot footer. defenders I, I am not a naked foot defender at all <laughs> myself <laughs> personally i am a sock Lady defender socks and shoes yeah, the same <laughs> fucking thing. Who gives a shit? But like your your feet are your body is being protected, and these are things that you should be washing and cleaning. And I doubt any of you motherfuckers clean your shoes ever. Period. Oh, oh I clean. Oh, I do all oh, the time. Oh, okay, I do. Well, yeah. oh, really? Well, I'm I proud wa- of you. I'm proud I, of both of you. I doubt I Greg does. I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. I very much bought into um, the white tennis shoe uh, look. And so now I have the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. And I go and I scrub that. And then I'll clean the bottom of the shoe off. So I'm not like bless you, Nick. bleaching the those bottom of the shoe, though. So like I'm not going to lick the bottom of my shoe if that's what you're asking me to do next. No. It will not happen today. No, it no, will no. Not happen. It's not about licking. It's just about like keeping them clean so they look nice, period, whatever. This is a different conversation. The conversation I'm trying to have right now is airports and airplanes and, and our rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. we're paying so rights. much money for these Worst. tickets, and that money just keeps adding up and adding up. And there's more convenience fees, and like I'm not going to read all of the convenience fees and what I'm paying for. I just have to assume one of the rights I'm paying for is to be comfortable to some yeah. extent, as long as it's not really negatively affecting those around me. So <laughs> to the point social Jen's contract. making here, the social it's, contract. That's what it's I'm a social about. contract. Like yes. if you got stinky feet, you should know that, and you should be aware, and like yeah. you should make countermeasures around that there's some odor eaters like, in there there's normal powder, powder. people's feet don't smell in socks but you, no your socks i think the socks are fine yeah we've, we've established that socks are okay nude and I feet think too if, far if, nude feet too far if you're wearing flip-flops keep the flip-flop on don't take one flip-flop off cross your leg i don't want because and this is and this, again this is not a stink it's problem this is more of a anyway, safety issue but, i've seen people yeah. And by people, I mean sometimes I wear flip-flops on planes and I forget to stop doing this, where you take one foot out and it's a naked foot. It's a naked foot and the the cart comes by Ah. and just clips your foot. It clips your naked foot. Proximity, too. That's the thing. You have to put somebody in – like if I have to be four inches from your feet and I don't know you, it's not nice. The social contract has been breached. Yeah. Feet are very – yeah. I thought Tim was kind of leading us down a path of comfort in an airport. And Tim, were you on the path of reclining the seats? No. Recline the seats. No. The 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 seat recline thing, I think, is a different conversation that I honestly don't really have a stance on that I believe in. Because I see both sides. Like it starts from the function of the seats allow you to do it. And I do feel like we are paying for the mm-hmm. allowance of the recline. No, you should be able to but recline. it's like that is fucking over the people behind us. Yeah, and I fine. know that more than anybody. The rules say you can't do it during mealtime. You can't do it during mealtime. Yeah, but like I'd say the majority of flights, there's not a mealtime. At least the ones I've been on. That's true. I mean, it depends on the long haul ones they say it. They're like, make sure during mealtime you keep your seat up so there's enough room. I mean, the other it's it's like I I'm a tiny person, so like I don't even mind. It doesn't even matter to me because I can't sleep. 
But like, I do hate it if I'm like leaning over and somebody goes boom and they hit my head. I'm like, oh, dude, check the rear view mirror. You can yeah. put it back, but you just gave me a concussion, dude. Yeah, you don't have to go. Yeah. That hard See, that's my that. thing. As a huge dude who rear travels view. all the time, right? Like, I don't even. I don't. I, I sleep. I sleep just straight up in the 90 degree straight angle up. seat they give you. I'm sleeping that's right respect. there. I'm not gonna push myself back there because I'm gaining what fun. another three degrees. Now it's an 85. It, it doesn't oh, matter. It means it so much. Matter. See, it I also, so mean, Greg, if I if I can ask you a question real quick, and I want your honest answer on this, are you anti? taking your shoes off on planes because you wear high top Chuck Taylors and they're just impossibly hard to take off. Is that a huge portion of it? Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's where where this all stems from. Where's some fans, man? I think you'll all understand exactly where I'm coming from. All right. When I was a little young lad and I would go to the store and mom would say, all right, we can get a new real Ghostbuster. We can get a new Batman. You were six one, by the way, at this point. Exactly. What I'm looking for (laughs) is the basic they are in their normal suit they are ready for anything superhero right Mm -hmm. i'm not looking for aqua batman i'm not looking for Uh. arctic superman right so somebody in the chat when i was talking about sleeping there i hurt my neck like bring a neck pillow you don't understand before we got all out of shape in like i haven't i've only flown once this year and i didn't fly at all or you know what i mean I, when, i when i was flying every other weekend I was fucking George Clooney on this thing, all right? Where I had the one bag, I had everything laid out, I knew exactly what I wanted and what I needed. (laughs) I was there with uh, mission essentials. If I didn't have it, I would procure it on the ground. That was the mission plan. So I'm not bringing a neck pillow. I'm not bringing all these little accoutrements I need. And yeah, I'm only bringing one pair of shoes and they're my lace-up cons. So it's like, yeah, I'm in like wrestling boots. I'm not going to sit there and like do all this stuff, lean back. No, I am there to be uncomfortable, get there as quickly as possible, get off the plane and I'm there and I get up and you motherfuckers rush to the aisle rush out in there like Uh, what are you doing uh, there's rules for this there's rules for everything don't take your shoes off everyone should sit and be miserable on the plane i consider i consider Mm -hmm. myself what i like to call the guardian of my row and what i mean by that is there's always that one person who goes i'm in the back row and if I go, if I go really quickly, I can skip all the way ahead. And then inevitably that person ends up standing with their butt right here on my, like by my yeah. face. If I'm yeah. and I'm like, I can't stand up. Now. So now I've been, I've been eking the, sh- like I'll get up fast and I'll just eke the shoulder out as yep. if to say, this is the implied barrier between you, like you and the exit. You have to wait your turn. If you wait That's your perfect. turn, you will actually get off That's faster perfect. than if you push forward and confuse everything. Cause people can get their bags off and things like that. And I just consider myself a hero. And, and you shoes look, on or off? We're all doing our part. Uh-huh. We have to do our part. And, um, you know, I mean, Shannon was out there doing clinical trials, making sure the, the vaccines <laughs> are, yeah. you know, they're safe for everyone and, and effective. And I'm that doing my part to make sure. Move, <laughs> that was not a move, though. That was 100% selfish. That was like, <laughs> I, I am scared <laughs> no, of this No, I virus. mean, it wasn't totally selfless. I really wanted that in my body. <laughs> no, I get it. I totally get it. And again, I really want to get off the plane faster. So if yeah. you're in my way and you don't, and then you're not supposed to be there, then that's, that's on you. I love kind of looking back at them, giving them look like, no, I know what you want. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. People never got off a plane before. On this plane. No, there's they the guy that's it. like, he's like, he's like, yeah, they're put, he's pushing up against and like, he's a little too close to you. are like, no, I get it. I know that you wanted. Yeah. To go but I'm not going to allow it. To run <laughs> everyone else. Like that child right there that who's, who's like their parents are trying to get their bag out and the kid doesn't understand anything. I'm like, they need space, right? You're stressing them out. And I will be, the, I am, I am not tall, but I can take up a lot of like horizontal space in an mm-hmm. aisle. Pretty well. I have broad shoulders. So I'll just be, I'll be that person. I don't mind it. Plus, you know, you don't have to make eye contact because Andy, they're behind you. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hadn't thought of that. Shannon, right, well, I, need yeah. to, I need to ask, does the wiki feet score of a human being impact their ability to take their shoes off? It's tough. You know, with five stars, it's just like. Are you what a five star? I don't want people looking. I don't want I'm, people. No. Shannon, what if I told you that somebody on this show has 5.3 stars? Really? Yes. And someone Amazing. else, 3.5. So <laughs> wow. A friend of mine texted me a couple of months ago a screen cap of uh, my wiki feet rating. And I was like, wow, that okay. Um, it weirds me out mostly just because yeah. my, like, my boobs, it should. if I have my boobs <laughs> out, I assume they're going to be looked at. That's a, There's a contract mm-hmm. there. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, you know, I'm gonna, mm-hmm. but my feet, my feet, they have never heard of sex. They do not understand. <laughs> they are innocent. They will. They are children forever. I just don't yeah. understand. And so I'm like, 
Nick, uh, I, do that to your my score okay. went yeah. down. Nick, you're four. I was gonna say thank you. Can we have the can we wow. have the rule? Yes. Okay. Nick is a wow. four point nine seven on WikiFeed right Holy now. Holy and I wow. mean that might as well be perfect. That's enough. That's good enough to get into Harvard right there. Yeah. Oh, Great. Yeah. What I is gotta your... say though, a four point nine seven almost sounds more impressive than a five point oh something because. Mm-hmm. The the latter sounds like some made up bullshit. A mm-hmm. four nine seven sounds like you are fucking actually perfect, You're crushing so it. Who yeah. was You're the like one real guy who went perfect. in there and was like, Mm-mm, "I don't agree." He has, he has thirteen. <laughs> I don't agree. I gotta make myself hurt. It was Greg. We all know. We do. Yeah, Greg. I only have the one. I'm not all thirteen of them. I'll have you know. Greg, right. I mean, Nick has a four point nine seven on Wikifeed. I have a four point nine on Uber, <laughs> like as a passenger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greg, 2.7. Greg, you know, we don't need to talk about what my score is, Kevin. You know what I mean? Down. Greg dropped. But, like, to be fair, some of these photos, you got dirty feet. So, well, dirty, to be feet. fair, I haven't looked in a long time, and I do appreciate people are uploading new feet photos of Greg. But, like, what I'm saying is the one that was the joke one of after the foot peel, that shouldn't go this hard against my rating. Oh, you did baby oh, feet? God. Yeah, I did oh, baby God. feet with uh, uh, my wife and our roommate at the time. And so it's that. It was great, yeah, and I was just flaky forever. But I'm saying that people are still using that against me. And then once I said that I cared about this and I didn't like that Nick had a better score than me, everybody mm-hmm. has gone in to vote me down, which I don't like. So I need people to go, you know, be on the right side of history. Go to Wicked Feet right now, log in, and upvote me. Give me, you know what I mean? Give me the 15 stars or the. the I will not hey, make Andy. a login. Andy, yeah. Andy, <laughs> say yes. Say yes. Say yes, Andy. Say yes, Andy. Go vote for me, Andy. You really Shannon you know Woodward. What? We said we would get you out around right now. But you said you could bleed over real quick. So I'm going to give you three questions lightning round. Are you ready? Wait, yeah. And then I have something I realize is coming out tomorrow that I think your audience will like. So I want to talk about that before I leave. But oh, yeah, do you have time for, oh, you have time for all this? Yeah, let's just do it. Okay, great. So then first one comes from Cameron Abbott, who wrote into Patreon.com slash kind of funny and says, this is for Miss Woodward. Raising Hope was one of the greatest shows of all time. Mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. such a brilliant and unorthodox show, were there any particular character or story elements that you still think of as hilarious or warm your heart to this day? Outside of Lucas Neff's impeccable Gollum impression. Oh my God. Yeah, it was good. Um, I mean, the pantyhose thing really feels like it has like a spot in, in cultural history. Like I had no idea that this existed before we started doing this. People that listen, have no idea what I'm talking yeah, I was gonna about. Say, explain to people who don't yeah, know. We did this episode where, where my character, like I, I had been talking to Greg Garcia, our showrunner. I was like, Hey, like everybody on this show gets to be crazy but me and like that's the thing is like can i just do an episode where i get to be crazy so i can get laughs because it's not fair and he was like good point so he did he we did this one episode where i was like going off my meds um and they're like oh great and so then i just do all this kind of wild stuff and one of them is that i'm like here's the thing uh i have this really bad fear of spiders and um the meds were really keeping that okay but i cannot sleep without pantyhose over my head because you know they crawl in there and they get at you and that's that's how they kill you um so then it became this running joke where like we would wake up and i would have pantyhose on my head <laughs> all the time and now it really like people were like they're right um and so now people still constantly are like, I still sleep with pantyhose on my head sometimes. And I'm like, I have never done that just for the record. You're like, this was not a real thing I brought yeah, up. That's a, that's, a, that's a TV show. All right. Your next one is similar to the law and order question. Uh, you were on psych and Nick loves psych. Tell Nick your best psych story. Oh, please. Oh, I've got a really good one. So John Landis directed that episode that really? I did who did American Werewolf in mm-hmm. London. Yeah. And he also doesn't direct so much after the Twilight Zone episode yeah, where yeah, somebody yeah, died. Yeah. And so um, there were a bunch of stunts in this. One of them was, I think her name's Maggie Lawson. This actress yeah. is on yeah. psych. Yeah. She's and we mixed like yes. Where I have, I have a, an ax and I'm like throwing it into the wall, like trying to kill her or something. And John Landis was like, come on, you, it's, it doesn't look heavy. And I'm like, well, because it's not heavy. It's not yeah, heavy. And he was like, use the real axe, use the real axe. Every, the people from Universal are there going like, oh, my God, we're going to let John Landis tell the actress she should use a real axe next wow. to this axe right next to her head. And I was like, don't move. I will not miss. And I really just because I, I kind of like held my arm like this and just went boom, like right into the thing. Yeah. But 
that was wild. That Jesus was really, Christ. really wild. And I think somebody told me recently, they're like, yeah, she did an, an interview where she talked about that, that that was one of the scariest moments of her life when this <laughs> girl guest starring was like, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> like he was just screaming he's like come on just really throw it in there and That's i was like okie dokie and I, was, I think i was like 22 it was in the between the pilot and the first season of the riches so that was wow. yeah it was pretty young anyway that, was that is funny. a great story <laughs> terrifying uh, and then the final one is john ba john bob stab writes in and says hey shannon please tell any memories you have starring as young cherokee woods in the hit 1996 tv movie tornado starring bruce campbell and ghostbuster ernie hudson thank you oh actually those are two different the cherokee thing was Did a john movie a wrong? tv movie it's two different tv movies there's one called tornado exclamation point yeah i don't think i have a name <laughs> there is actually it's on youtube it's i'm only in the intro i'm like in the sixth grade or something it's truly one of the worst tv movies it's it's really a hoot worth your time watch it on youtube tornado exclamation point but the i think the other one was another tv movie i did when we were living in austin texas for both of these um where i'm sure you can imagine i got the best work and really was a plus talent um mm -hmm. i was great and uh, <laughs> um, I played Angelina Jolie's daughter in this mini series called True Women. And it was before she was famous. It was right before um, like Gia came out. So oh, wait, was, what year was that? I mean, I don't know. I was 13. So 96. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It was a while ago. So what I'm saying is she was the most beautiful person I had ever yeah. seen in my <laughs> life. I was like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was I was truly stunned and and she really liked me. I was only there for like a day. My entire part is cut out. I have photos of it, but I was I did my scenes were cut. Um and uh she she would like put me on her lap and would like talk to me and hang out and I just remember being like this is the most beautiful person I've truly <laughs> ever seen in my life. And then she became very very famous mm -hmm. pretty much right after that and I just yeah. remember being like I know her. I know her. Um, I didn't know her. Yeah, you haven't <laughs> talked to her at all. No, we're not friends. Um, but anyway. You could just yeah, tell people was... your friends. I'll tell people your friends for you. Yeah, sure. No, don't do that. It'll make me sound like a... <laughs> <laughs> we'll make Angie? it the headline. Angie. <laughs> <laughs> all right those are your rapid fire questions what's the thing you want to talk about that's coming up oh uh so i did this narrative podcast it's gonna be on audible it comes out tomorrow it's um based on the world of the division um it stars me and katie sackoff we play sisters Whoa, katie from awesome. Battlestar galactica yeah. and mandalorian and all that stuff um we play sisters um it's really it's really fun and it's really compelling. It comes out tomorrow. I just realized I hadn't talked about it at all, that I was like, oh, this is a gaming podcast. This is like definitely the world where um, that would be that would be applicable. People yeah, might Yeah, I was Googling it. for it earlier today because a long time ago you hit me up and said, I'm doing this thing. Like I'm starting to play. What do I need to like look oh, yeah, into about it? Yeah, that was why because I we were recording and I was like, oh, I, I've never played The Division um, and at first I was like, is it a game? Like, cause at first I didn't, I, I was like, is it a podcast? Is it a game? I was like, oh, it's a narrative podcast. Awesome. Cause like Ubisoft, I didn't know they were doing that. Sure. Um, but it's really cool. And, uh, I think people are really going to like it. I think there's like, there's like trailers and stuff that'll call come out, I think in the morning and stuff when the podcast launches, Can't wait. Stuff. but it's cool. It's fun. Very cool. Super cool. Yeah. Thank you, Shannon, for hanging out Check with us today. Out. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, everybody, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast. Remember, uh, we have a post show to do. We're doing it on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny. Remember, on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, of course, you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show ad-free. You can get each and every episode with the post show we do. However, if you have no bucks, toss our way. No big deal. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. Roosterteeth.com. Podcast services around the globe each and every week to have some friends and some bullshit and hang out and have a good time. For now, we're going to say goodbye to Shannon. We're going to go do a post show. But for everybody else, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Hey, say yes. Bye, guys. Say yes, Andy. <laughs> Bye, Shannon. <laughs>